in the middle of a mess. Have you gotten bad news recently? Are you finding yourself in the middle of a mess? Now, today I'm not talking about matters of life and death here, although this method can help there too. There is a difference between a problem and an inconvenience. If money can fix it, it's an inconvenience. Now, that doesn't mean your inconvenience isn't a big one, at least in your mind. But what was your response to your bad news or that mess? Where was your focus at that moment or even still today? Was your focus on the mess you found yourself in? Or is your mind focused on the solution? Now, I know you're sitting here listening to this and thinking, oh boy, here she goes again with the new agey positive mumbo jumbo. And if you're thinking that, It's no wonder you're sitting there in the situation you're in. Strong words? Yep, you need strong words right now. You're in a freaking mess. Because right now, you are a freaking mess. How do I know that? Because I've been there. The things you continue to think, the feelings you strongly feel, and the actions you take as a result of those recurring thoughts and feelings are critical when you get inconvenient news once you find yourself in the middle of a mess. Don't believe me? Well, look at it this way. I can guarantee you continuing to dwell on what is wrong in your life won't make things right anytime soon. Seriously, how is spinning around the axle in your mind, wondering why it happened, saying how unfair he or she or God or life is, playing the blame game and rehashing it to yourself and everyone else around you, how's that working for you? Is it clearing the fog from the air in your mind? Is it injecting solutions? Is it moving you forward? Is it making you feel good? How did you sleep last night? Who robbed you of that sleep? The situation or your thoughts about it? You're in control, honey, and you're wasting precious time. The universe never pushes or leads you to something worse for yourself. And yet, here you sit, dug in by your heels and fingernails, looking for someone to blame and screaming, why me? And the worst case, you are making things much worse for yourself as a result of what you continuously and negatively think, feel, and do in response to bad news or inconveniences. Rarely, when you brood and think and feel and analyze your mess with a fine-tooth comb, does it end up with just that one inconvenience. Oh, hell no. It just starts the snowball rolling. I'm here to tell you that with that shitty attitude of yours, whatever inconvenience you have going on is going to get way worse for you before it gets better. Because that's where your focus is. And what you focus on grows. I make no apologies for this. It's the law. I have modified my belief of the phrase, it is what it is, to it is who you are. Any recurring scenario in your life is a reflection of your recurring strong thoughts, feelings, and actions. You think life sucks. You think you are a victim of circumstances or others' actions. You think life is out to get you. You think you're put here as a fighter of battles, as a survivor. You think you can't. You think you're always sick. You think it's just one thing after another. You think you'll always be alone. You think you have to be tough so life doesn't beat you up more than it already has, don't you? And guess what? You're absolutely right. What you think and believe about your life is true for you, and life will continue to affirm your belief just as long as you believe it. Think about your typical Monday. You get up exhausted, because after lamenting to yourself, your family, and Facebook through half of Sunday and into the evening about weekends being way too short, you toss and turn half the night. You lay there in the dark and dwell on your tight money situation and all the crap you have ahead of you and the mountain of work waiting and how the boss was going to be up your ass again on another crappy Monday. You get up after hitting the snooze three times, stumble around half asleep getting ready for the day, and you stub your toe. Shit, you exclaim. 
Then you think through the tears. Yep, it's another Monday. This kind of thing always happens to me on Monday. Then you're running later because you're sitting there on the bed looking intently at your throbbing toe, wondering how you're going to fit it into your work shoe and asking yourself, how stupid can I be? So you limp to the car in a rush to leave for work, start the car, but forget to open the garage door and back into it. Bam! Now the car is dented and the door is broke and money is really going to be tight now. And now you really feel stupid. Then you're really late for work. And the boss is really going to be up your ass. Do you see a pattern here? Let me ask you something. Who started that mess? The person who started that mess is the same person who could have avoided it. The good news? The person who started that mess has the power to change it even in the middle of the mess. So whatever mess you find yourself in today, I want you to think about nothing else except this. Focus on what you love about this day. Love everything you can freaking think of loving. Love your cat. Love that coffee. Love your car. Love the sunshine. Love the air conditioning when you come in out of the heat. Love the way your freshly washed sheets smell when you lie down on them at night. Throw your love out there every freaking where. Because what you focus on grows. Focus on what you desire out of this day and dwell on the potentiality of positive scenarios that could arise as a result from this inconvenient situation. Dream big. Entertain how good it feels to dwell on those positive outcomes because what you focus on grows. Focus on all the things for which you are grateful. You have a table to stub your toe on. You have a freezer with ice for that toe. You have a car to drive. You have a choice of shoes to wear. You have a garage to put your car in. You have a boss and a workload because you are blessed with a job. What you focus on grows. Focus on your solutions. Focus on the present and forward, not back, when dealing with inconveniences. Unless, of course, you wish for the past to pile up around you. Focus on your method for change rather than your mistakes. Stop your second guessing. Replace what if with what now. Every one of these points can be used even with life-changing problems we face. Yes, we have strong feelings when we're grieving or hurting from a devastating loss. Those feelings are natural. And then get your mind focused on the same thing you would with your inconveniences. Give this method a try. I don't mean a little try. I mean 30 days of honest minute-by-minute devotion. Like any discipline or change in lifestyle, you're not always going to hit the bullseye. When, not if, you screw this up, just get back on track immediately. If it doesn't work, well, then you're welcome to stay in your negative mindset and your negative life. Notice I didn't say, go back to it. Because you never left. I promise, if you give this method 30 days of consistent and honest effort, you will see your life begin to change for the better. If it doesn't, you weren't putting forth consistent and honest effort. Because I promise, if you give this method 30 days of consistent and honest effort, you will see your life begin to change for the better. Thank you for listening. Please support our mission to leave people better at dawnandlucky.com. To receive every recording and writing we produce, for full access to our private group full of inspiring folks from around the world, To get the inside scoop and free releases on Amazing Living podcasts and videos, please be sure to subscribe at the partner level or higher at dawnandlucky.com.